In this video, Brian Brosdahl is going to share everything you need to know to catch fish on Leech Lake. So without further ado, let's jump right in. You know, I get asked a lot, uh, what separates Leech? Why is Leech uh, such a great lake compared to a lot of other lakes in Minnesota or anywhere? Uh, if you look at just the professional walleye tournaments that have come through Leech Lake, uh, there are some of the highest weigh-ins when they have maybe an app where they could weigh fish. This past tournament that was there, they had just under 50 pounds for five fish. And so Leech Lake has big fish, but it's the dynamics of a lake. It's a lake that you could have 100 to 150 boats that just disappeared to the lake. And everybody's got their own plan because there's so many different places you can go. The diversity of the lake is three different types of lake from a deep, kind of cold lake to a, a moderate depth lake to a shallow lake in the bays with vegetation the rock reefs the sandbars the cara beds which are just great for spawning it it separates itself in the clean water so there's big lakes with flats and, and real diverse but uh, the fact that this lake is a, such an ultra clean lake it's in a great area it's a glacier lake um, and it has a great population of walleyes. You know, the, the eater sizes are boom and bust, but there's always big ones. There always has been big ones. And we're finding out there's more big ones than we ever thought. As technology advances, there's some really big fish out there, and they're not all just deep. They're not all just shallow. They're all over the place. And so that's what separates leech from a lot of lakes, and the fact that it's gigantic. It's 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 very proportionate at 100 and close to 115,000 acres. It's a big lake. One thing that's cool about Leech Lake is the fact that it's broken into a number of different sections, and these sections are unique in their own different ways. And Brian's going to talk a little bit about how he looks at these different sections and how he utilizes and takes advantage of the fact that different parts of the lake fish differently. One thing to remember with leech, all the different bays, as I mentioned before, there's deep, moderate depths and shallow, but actually Walker Bay itself could be a lake trout lake. There's no lake trout in it, but it has the depths of a lake trout lake, which makes it big and mysterious and super deep. And there's Cisco and it has tons of lake shiners and spot tails. So the wallies could be anywhere. They could be suspended, they could be hyper deep, they could be in the weeds all at the same time. You go out to the main lake and there, there's just tons and acres, hundreds and thousands of acres. So there's some reefs that are over 100 acres and there's Pelican Island complexes over a thousand acres. So you got huge rock complexes out there and you got the shallow weedy bays all around the lake. The, the thing is what I noticed on Leech, whether it's spring, summer, or fall, when the water's really cold and they're not biting in one bay, it's warmer somewhere else. And when the water's too warm in another bay, in late summer, it's cooler in another bay. And when one bay's firing, another bay is just cooking. So you, there's something all the time. And one thing, just fill your tank, because you never know where you're going to go. But that's the surprise about Leech Lake. It's really cool, and everybody loves it. Uh, everybody likes fishing. It's a diverse fishery. Uh, of course, walleyes are the popular thing, but it's known for its muskies. It, and 50 incher gets that number gets thrown around a lot. Leech Lake does produce them uh, more than any lake just about anywhere, uh, other than the Great Lakes and uh, Big Pike, uh, Panfish, Jumbo Perch. Uh, so it's got a little bit of everything. Now Brian is going to cover down on the topic that most of you are probably looking forward to, and that is how to catch walleyes on Leech Lake starting from spring all the way through fall. You know, going from spring on and throughout the seasons, Leech Lake always has a bite. One of the things I like to do on Leech, and Leech is a jig bite. So jig bite, basically from walleye opener all the way up just about to the end of June, and they love watermelon, that contrasting color, because it kind of is a perchy color, but a little bit brighter so they can see it. Uh, you know, if the lake gets stirred up, It'll, the water will be darker, but the water's really clearing up now. So, uh, you know, one thing to remember in clear water, 
uh, sight feeding is going on more and more so instinctive reactive striking bakes like this in the summer work really well so you could jig your round and you know going from minnows to leeches to plastics to hair jigs to whatever you could always jig and leech but as as spring goes by uh, you know getting into summer you're going to be using uh, butterfly blades from Northland Tackle it's a, in bottom bouncing on the rock reefs but now with the water clearing slip bobbers work fantastic from June all the way till the waters cool off find the fish and throw a bobber waters clear and they'll move away from your boat so the idea is to pitch away from them you could pitch jigs also but you can't beat a big fluffy leech under a bobber and that's what's basically winning all the tournaments right now is uh, a light bite slip float from Northland Tackle and a leech with a little fireball jig in some of these colors like this uh, and other colors you know the, you got to have a bunch green has always been hot on Leech Lake that kind of John Deere green and chartreuse uh, works really well and then parrot has always been a great color out there and the MVP jig is going to be a good jig there but use small jig under bobber and uh, always try to find the active walleyes will be the, the fish highest up in the school and uh, you'll be surprised a lot of good eaters out there and then night trolling with crankbaits works really well flat leg trolling you can use a spinning rod for that just pitch out a, a rumble shiner from Northland Tackle and uh, drag that behind a boat at uh, two two and a half miles an hour and if you're hitting the bottom reel it in a little bit that's how simple it is you don't need light counters at night but anyway the whole thing about Leech Lake is it's diverse and from spring to fall you, you could jig rig and then when when the cold weather a fall comes then you want to you, you want to jig with big rainbows and fish windy points where the winds blowing into the points it's unbelievable how uh, the, the walleyes turn on if it's not rough you're not catching them and uh, so when it gets rough the walleyes get brave and you could drift right over them in drifting windy points or spot lock and pitching never put your bobbers away and when you can't get leeches anymore on leech they absolutely love them so approach it the way you want to but just know this don't leave home without bobbers so light bite bobbers from Northland MVP jigs and minnows butterfly blade spinners and uh, you pretty much got it covered and then a few puppet minnows the rusty crayfish puppet everybody on leech has the rusty crayfish puppet so you know on leech lake a key thing to remember when you're fishing walleyes from spring to fall they use flats and on the flats there's a pillowy vegetation it's it's an actually an algae called cara and that that stuff is kind of scattered along the flats with little clearings and the walleyes work their way through it but also when the cabbage comes up the walleyes are in it there's milfoil now and the walleyes work the edges of the milfoil so vegetation is key sore rocks and shadowy areas as the water gets clearer and clearer you want to find steep edges and shadows but as it gets clearer they're also using higher spots in the water column so in deeper water they might be suspended they may might be off of structures that are points that go to a steep break uh, so don't forget to check all that in clear water weeds grow big and bushy so get in the weeds and pull some big walleyes out. Next up, Brian is gonna share some of his thoughts on locating and catching perch on Leech Lake. Love that lake for perch. Uh, and there's a lot of foot long or bigger perch in that lake and it's just a factory for them. It does get some perch pressure, but it's a window lake. So you could try all you want, but there are some key times when the perch really school up and you can't believe uh, how many that will be out there and th one of the key times obviously is fall as September rolls in in early October the perch move up on the flats and they school up and sometimes they'll, they'll school up by size where you're actually catching all big perch but it's always perch jerking because you're sorting through a big school of fish and they'll move in uh, they're, they're scattered along the whole lake May June and July and they start schooling up as we get closer to late summer fall and that's that's an amazing bite when they move in and it's known and it, it it can get real busy there but perch over 14 inches aren't uncommon and i've seen 15s and it's one of the only lakes in minnesota other than lake of the woods that i've seen 15 inch perch 
Um, and then in the winter time, it is super popular for perch. And there's the difference in winter is we could finesse fish, fish and chase perch pods. But of course, uh, late winter is probably the best for perch as a school to come into spawn. So late summer, fall and late winter are, are the best times for perch on Leech Lake. And they do get them in midwinter. Just before vehicle traffic comes out, uh, the perch fishing will be really good. And they're not giant schools. They're, they're nice pods of, of good perch. But when vehicle traffic starts, kind of shuts her down. So you want to get there early. Now, anytime you go to a new body of water, if you're trying to understand the location of fish and their feeding habits, it's really important to understand the forage in the lake. So Brian is now going to talk a little bit about Leech Lake and the different forage that's in it. You know, Leech Lake uh, has a diverse forage base. It has spot tail shiners. Perch are probably the biggest forage for all the walleyes in just about everything in the lake. There's uh, tulabies, there's whitefish, uh, there's lake shiners, there's uh, uh, all kinds of different redfin shiners, all different shiners, grass shiners, um, and dace minnows, uh, darters, and it has rusty crayfish. So, you know, rusty crayfish are giant forage now. It's an invasive. But a lot of lakes, uh, the fish are d where there's rusty, is the fish are just super fat. They just chow on them. And uh, a lot of people visiting the area like trapping rusty crayfish now because it's an invasive with a benefit. You're allowed to trap rusty crayfish and they have crayfish boils. And many people say it's the best crayfish boil they've ever had because the water's real clear and clean. But uh, you know, with all that diversity in bait, Remember, perch is number one. So perch patterns are really important. And uh, you could probably see that. A little bit of green with stripes, little orange in there. You want it to look very perchy. A small stand-up fireball is really hard to beat for perch. Put a fathead minnow on, set it down to the bottom, lift up, and they'll be on there. Sometimes you could pitch it out. Just short pitches in the pockets. And they're like little tigers in a jungle, and they come out and grab it. But as far as walleyes, perch, buskies, there's everything. There's also white suckers out there. So the muskies get really big eating, eating suckers. And when they take down a sucker, they're four, five, six pounds. So they get a lot of growth off that. But they like soft, soft fish. So they're eating a lot of uh, tulabies, which are ciscos, uh, known to everybody else, and, and white fish. And in the fall, um, from spring to fall, the walleyes follow the perch. And the shiners, obviously, when the spot tails come in, uh, the walleyes are following them around. But as fall comes, the walleyes, the pike, the muskies follow the whitefish spawn. When the water temperature gets in the 40s, the biggest fish in Leech Lake rise to the weed beds, and it can be just phenomenal. And in the wintertime, when the eel pout move up on the bars to spawn in the cara, the perch follow them. And what follows perch? Walleyes. But right at the end of the season, super good for walleyes. And then the perch are there, because perch eat the, the eel pout eggs. So there's always something going on in leech. It's a giant body of water. Um, it's uh, actually quite difficult to guide. You could stay to a bay or drive around to the next bay, but sometimes there's pressure ridges and bad ice. You can't just drive anywhere. Um, always uh, use caution. And I always recommend a sled, snowmobiles, are, are probably the best thing to use on the ice. Uh, you know, so there's there's ridges and vehicles with tires don't go over ridges very well. And pressure ridges are something you don't want to cross, especially in the middle of the lake. And there's not a lot of bridges. There's more and more roads now, so there's ability of traffic off the south end. Uh, to get on the south end, there's probably three or four big roads on Leech Lake now. Uh, so you could go just about anywhere in some you know, major uh, spots, but for the rest of it, snowmobile or an ATV had tracks and practice caution. Next up, Bro is gonna share one of the biggest mistakes that he sees anglers make when he's fishing on Leech Lake. One of the mistakes I see people doing on Leech all the time is, well now with clear water, a big, loud, noisy bottom bouncer singer, sinker right by your boat, dragging through the fish. If you don't get an algae bloom, it ain't gonna work. They're not gonna fall for it because the water's clear. They can see the whole, the, the six, even an eight foot presentation all at once, it's it's changing, so adapt to the change. If the water looks really clear, you gotta get away from the boat. Uh, and another thing I see is after the spot tail shiner 
uh, run is over, they spawn and they, they go back out. It's not always about big minnows in the summertime. Smaller minnows pitched on the weed edge or in the weed pockets on a stand-up fireball jig will work better than big minnows. You could outfish a big minnow 10 to 1 and small leeches. Not micro leeches, but large panfish leeches or medium leeches on a stand-up fireball jig. Fantastic and probably the best way to go all summer for pitching and for action because you catch a jumbo perch, anything will hit it. And the smallmouth bass population is slowly becoming uh, giant. Uh, big bass are, are there. They've always been there, but in lesser amounts. Now the population is, is, is really growing, especially in the rocky areas of Leech Lake of the South End. And uh, they're, they're a real nice bonus, a nice surprise. One thing that's really cool about Leech Lake is the fact that it's so diverse. It has really good fishing for a lot of different species of fish. And Brian covered down pretty hard on walleyes and perch specifically, but it's also a great lake for muskies and bass as well. And he's gonna touch on that a little bit right now. You know, one thing with Leech Lake, uh, it's known for muskies. You talk about muskies to anybody who fishes muskies in, and, and read anything in the muskie world, uh, Leech Lake is on the list because it, it's a place where you get 50 plus inch muskies. And I, in my lifetime, I've heard of many, many fish in that 54, 55 inch range. So there might be some even bigger now out there. Uh, muskies, since catch and release, they're starting to be bigger and bigger muskies out there. And largemouth bass, it's some of the best largemouth bass fishing in the nation. Not for giants. You don't catch great big Florida uh, Ted Pounders or El Salto Lake uh, California fish, but you could pull up to a dock. Someone uh, from the south told me once, I went fishing on the docks and there's bass under every one of them. And uh, they, they just don't get the pressure. Maybe now because I'm mentioning it, but Leech Lake is full of bass and they're a little easier to catch, which makes it fun because there's nothing more fun than catching a whole bunch of three to five pound bass. Well, that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Brian for sharing the information. I think there's a lot of good stuff in there, especially if you happen to be targeting walleyes or perch. That's where we went a little bit deeper, but hopefully this video gives you a little understanding of the whole lake in general. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.